Welcome to Bendung. Today we're going to take you on a travel day. It's early morning. We are at a stall in front of our hotel to eat bubur ayam. Now, bubur ayam I've had in so many times. My favorite is actually in Jakarta, but in Padang, uh, it is a dish where they have several versions. They have the regular bubur ayam, and then they have a second one called bubur ayam bandung. And I've been validated. The reason why they call it bandung is they use this shredded chicken, which is so much better, because otherwise you get like these weird, like just diced chicken chunks, which is not as good. But bubur is essentially a Chinese dish. You might know it as kanji. In Vietnam, they call it chao muk. And then also in Thailand, they call it something else. I'm not really sure what it is, but it's a rice porridge. It is really fantastic. There are a number of different things in it, depending on where you are. So in this one, I have a boiled egg, which I don't like. I'm giving it to Alan. I have chicken liver. I have shredded chicken. There's also fried mung bean, fried shallots, green onion. We've got, she put on it like this. She said it was a salty ketchup. Alan says it's just a little bit of like really rich chicken stock. And then you've got this. Now, before I came to Indonesia, I would have looked at kanji and thought, oh, I can't stand the texture, I can't do it. But you get a little bit of the kanji, you get a little bit of things like the mung bean, which gives it some texture, the green onion, and you just go in for it. Oh, it's so good. They have this, this rich, salty stock. So she was right, it is like a salty stock over this. So it's just this really creamy, it's almost like chicken pot pie. The creaminess, the richness of it, that's what you get. And instead of the potatoes, you get this rice. I'm so excited because today we are headed to Jakarta. And in Jakarta, well, to get to Jakarta, we're gonna take the train. Now, I've been taking the trains all over Java. I haven't really shared much about it. But today I thought, I'm gonna explain what the, taking the train is like here because it's faster, but I don't know if it's always better, but it is faster. It'll take us an hour and a half to get to Jakarta. We're gonna check into our hotel, which is also in Pasar Baru, which means new market, but it means it's like a marketplace. Not the best neighborhood, but it's usually where locals are. Lots of good shopping, lots of good food, so that's where we're staying. We're staying overnight. Um, but before we go to Thailand tomorrow, we're going to meet up with Aloy. And so Aloy is going to take us for the best goat satay in Jakarta. I believe him because he has taken me to so many great places to eat and he says this one is legendary. So we're gonna eat this and I'll see you at the train station. So we're gonna head to the train station now. The really great thing is the train station is only a seven minute walk and that's actually the benefit of using the train. It's always in the city center. So in small towns like this, it's perfect. You're never that far away, always a walkable distance. Bus stations tend to be on the outskirts of the city and then you need to take like a, a taxi or local transport in. And that often costs more than what the bus costs. The bus driver will try to let you off as close to the city center as possible, but you're still a ways away. So even in previous cities, sometimes we had to take a grab another 30 minutes just to get to our hotel. So we are in the city center of Bendung. We'll go to the city center of Jakarta. Now Jakarta is a little bit unusual because the city is so gigantic. Even when we get there, we will still need to take transportation to our hotel. I kind of screwed up there. I should have gotten a hotel by the train station, but didn't really think that far ahead. that all of the train stations I've been in so far are actually really easy to use, lots of helpful staff, English if you need it, but it's pretty straightforward. There have been a couple of times that we needed help and people helped us right away, but I'm gonna share with you once we get to our spot how we actually learn to do it. Alan hadn't been on the train a ton, and so we learned together how to make the train the easiest as possible, and so now, coming through Java, it was actually really, really easy. Into 
this is probably the best station we've gone through. I don't know if it's a Monday, so it's not even like they think there are a lot of tourists coming, but everyone here, you cannot go through like the wrong way. People are always stopping you, asking you where you're going. And then also, I would just say, if you're going on a train for the first time and you're a little bit worried about where to go, maybe don't start with Jakarta. Start somewhere else. But even Jakarta, I think it's pretty easy. Before we leave, I just wanted to share how we booked this ticket because it has been a process for us both to learn how to do it. And we actually didn't learn the best way until we were in Georgia and then actually at the ticket office they said there's a way easier way for you to do this if you're going to be taking lots of trains. A lot of people go to ticket.com, T-I-K-E-T.com yeah. and that's a third party. You pay a charge for that but you can actually book directly online with an app, the KAI app and you get the best price. It's super easy to do. You can choose your a class. The only tricky thing is paying because they don't take international credit cards. But you can book your ticket on the app and then you have half an hour, an hour to go to one of the convenience stores, Indomara or Alphamar. You show them your app, you pay them, and you're done. The reason I recommend doing this is because sometimes trains sell out, especially if it's a popular weekend. So you can book weeks in advance and it is so much easier. I think in some cases it's probably better to take the bus. It's much cheaper. And if you go from smaller city to smaller city, there's not a lot of traffic. But if you're leaving Jakarta or heading into it, the traffic is insane. So taking the bus is not an option. Even though it's a, the distance is not far, rush hour. We're gonna take it into Gambier Station and then we still have to take transport to our hotel. Just a couple more things about the amenities on executive class, as I don't think there are many. You do get comfortable seats, lots of leg room, but uh, no Wi-Fi, no free meals. Although the meals here are not too expensive, but I would suggest actually bringing something on for water and also for something to eat for a long haul. But you do have these two plugs, so that is great. You do have, I'm only five feet tall, so I never need lots of leg room. You do have a little tray, so it's like you're on an airplane and you can recline and sleep. That's pretty much it. That's what executive class gets you. I guess that's my only pet peeve about the train is that technically there's a business class. I don't know how, I've never seen those tickets available, but I think business class, if you can get it, is probably the better deal. It's probably the same thing. I actually don't think it exists. I think they just put it on and say that there's a third class to make you think, oh, your only choices are economy or executive. But really, that's not much of a choice. I totally got busted trying to film the people next to me. They actually got full on food. So it's kind of like also on a plane where you can get food. We just got coffee. Uh, 15,000 and then they also have potato chips and maybe chocolate you can either go to the dining car where you can actually sit down in booths or they come through often enough that you can just get it at your seat I just really think it's crazy that you could choose between Arabica and Robusta this is really how serious they take coffee here anyway I just love how open Indonesia is to YouTube, that you're not too embarrassed. People aren't like freaked out if you're sneakily trying to shoot them eating and their food. So we had that coffee, which really stimulated my appetite, and then I got really hungry. Now people do come through with food, but we thought we would come to the dining car to show it to you. It's right beside a spot where you can pray if you're on the train during one of the call to prayers. And then also just a really nice kind of dining area. I think a hack could be if you only want to pay economy, pay economy but come here right away because then you get a lot more space. And food here I think started at 35. We're getting a dish for 40 and it's beef. Rice, black pepper steak, veggies, shrimp, crackers. Oh, good. It's actually really good. It's a little bit sweet, 
a little bit spicy from the pepper, but not too spicy at all. I would say this is like a good plain food dish. I bet you think that I should calm down. Alright, so we made it and about 10 minutes ago I thought, oh, I should start to look for my hotel reservation and realized I forgot to make it. So I think we're going to go get something to eat so that I can also look at uh, where we're going to stay for the night. Maybe we will stay close to the train station or I think actually my first priority is to find a spot that's close to where we're going to have goat satay tonight with Aloy. For the first time. should work it out you know we should work it out all right we made it we are in Pasar Baru some of the streets of Pasar Baru are nicer than others this one is actually really nice our Gojek driver had to drop us off on the street because we are actually in an alleyway which we're gonna walk down Will you take me for Red oils and oil are yeah corporate management companies and they're kind of known to also be the place where people want to rent by the hour they go to. But actually, this is cheap and cheerful, which is perfect because we're just here for one night. All right, so it's a couple of hours later and we're ready to go out. We're gonna meet Aloy in the Sabang neighborhood, which I featured before with him for street food. Uh, this time, we're going to go for the best goat satay, according to him. I think it's gonna be a little bit difficult after going for a satay at in Malang. Getting a grab at six is harder than we thought. Nobody can come pick us up in the neighborhood, so we actually had to leave the neighborhood and we're trying to walk out to a main street so someone will come and get us. The last grab said that there's something about the number of license plates or something, but he accepted the order, but then realized he couldn't actually come get us. So we're gonna try again. Aloy, I think, is waiting for us at the sate place, but it just shows you the craziness of Jakarta at six o'clock. There are tuk-tuks, there are people walking, there are people on motorcycles, there are like cars, vans, everybody's honking, trying to get home or trying to deliver an order. Agun. This place has been open for over 50 years. It's famous for its satay kambing and Alois says it's the best in central Jakarta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to get the satay kambing but they also have satay hati kambing which is liver. I gotta tell you something though. Two things about Jakarta today. It's hot! It is mid-October. Rainy season begins in November and so this is it's so hot here, you can't go out during the day and even right now everybody's still sweating and it's like almost 8 o'clock at night. And also, I forgot about the traffic. So, they wouldn't pick us up where we were in Pasar Baru. We had two Gojeks or Grabs cancel and finally a third agreed to come pick us up but it was on a main street and then just getting around anywhere. So I would say if you're looking for somewhere to stay, think about what you want to do and get a hotel close to that because otherwise, it's minimum half an hour just to go like a kilometer or two but you're probably looking at an hour most of the time during the day if you get on a motorcycle a grab motorcycle it's much much faster but there are two of us so we were in a car so i would say my very first friend in indonesia was aloy he was the first person that i met when I came here, thanks to Witty, my editor, I hadn't even met him yet, but he said, you have to go out with my friend Aloy. He knows everything about food in Jakarta, and he really does. So much so that I've shot many, many videos with him, and people have asked me, is he a food guide? He's not, he just really loves food. And then of course I met Alan in Padang, and then I introduced the two of them, and they became friends. And then I also introduced Alan to Witty, my editor, and they became friends, and so it's just really 
so nice to have everybody together except for Woody. He's in Salatiga, and the next time, Woody yeah. needs to come. Yeah. We'll go somewhere fun. But I trust all of Aloy's recommendations, and he, so when he said, this is the best satay in Central Java, I really think he knows what he's talking about. He did tell me the peanut sauce wasn't spicy, so I feel confident that I can have it, and it's not gonna be too spicy. Mmm, the fat is so good. The fat is the best part. You think you don't want to eat the fat, but when you put it all in your mouth, the fat is the most flavorful with that charcoal. So tender. This is so good. Mmm. Now, I'm gonna end the video here, but in the next video, you're gonna see us in a new country because tomorrow we're heading to Bangkok. Patreon community for more behind the scenes and exclusive content you won't find elsewhere. You can also find me on Instagram and be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. All of these things make my day. Thank you so much for your support.